I am Karthik Godavarthi and today I am here to guide you through the art and science of crafting high scoring answers in anthropology paper. We will explore not just how to write but how to think, analyze and express ideas in a way that resonates with the core of anthropological studies. In this video, I will simplify the process of developing high scoring answers into few manageable steps and elaborate on each one in detail. From understanding the key elements of a great answer to mastering the skills of effective communication, I have got it all covered. So grab your notebooks and let's embark on this learning adventure together. The preparation for this exam is rigorous, involving countless hours of studying, using various resources, attending lectures and engaging in practice tests. The effort and dedication invested in this journey are ultimately evaluated through the answers written in this exam. A significant hurdle for candidates during their preparation is mastering the art of writing well-structured answers. Through this video, I aim to resolve some of the frequent uncertainties faced by the aspirants. Before proceeding, it's important to understand that your answer should meet three key criteria. 1. Clarity of thought. This is derived from a clear understanding of the concepts and thorough preparation. Your grasp of the subject matter should be evident in your answers. Number 2. Range of application. Your answer should demonstrate a comprehensive approach to the question. This is again a reflection of your preparedness. Given that anthropology is a holistic, comparative and an historical science, your answer should mirror these characteristics, especially if the questions call for it. And 3. Power of expression. This involves the ability to communicate in a straightforward, clear and understandable manner. Even someone new to the topic should find your answers comprehensible. Achieving this simplicity requires not just proficiency in language, but also in-depth knowledge of the subject, quality preparation and the skill to articulate your thoughts effectively in the language you chose for the exam. Now let's delve into some specific aspects you should consider. The first crucial step in answering is to pinpoint the keywords in the question. These keywords will guide you to understand what specific topic or aspect the question is addressing. Identifying these will help you focus your answer on the relevant areas, ensuring that your response is directly aligned with what is being asked. Understanding the task requirement. In this step, it's essential to either underline or mentally note the specific task the question requires you to perform. Are you being asked to explain a concept? Is the requirement to compare and contrast different ideas? Perhaps the question demands a critical commentary on a topic. Focusing on these instructions will ensure that your answer aligns precisely with the expectations of the question. Here's a detailed breakdown of various question types and how to approach them. 1. Discuss Discuss involves exploring multiple viewpoints and providing a balanced explanation. This requires thinking about contrasting ideas and various perspectives such as advantages versus disadvantages or strengths versus weaknesses. For instance, a question like discuss the genetic and non-genetic factors in the biocultural adaptation of human beings to different environments requires an explanation of all relevant factors categorized under genetic and non-genetic components. Number 2. Explain Explain means describing why or how something happens. 
including potential consequences. The answer should clarify the phenomenon with key details. For example, explain how Buddhism influenced the economic and cultural transformations of Indian society, asks for a straightforward explanation of processes and outcomes. Number three, elucidate. This entails clarifying or explaining in depth, often by providing detailed examples. It often involves analyzing cause and effect relationships. For instance, elucidate the skeletal differences between humans and chimpanzees, expects detailed examples, potentially illustrated with diagrams. Number four is examine. Examine means conducting a thorough analysis of a subject. This could involve making comparisons, drawing parallels, and giving examples. For example, examine the impact of feminist movements on the universality of marriage and family structure demands a comprehensive exploration of the topic. Number five, evaluate. This requires discussing strengths versus weaknesses or advantages versus disadvantages. It might also ask for a personal conclusion backed by reason. Take for instance, evaluate participant observation in producing anthropological knowledge, asks for a discussion on the methods, strengths and weaknesses in ethnographic research. Number six, critically evaluate or critically examine. This kind of question asks for an overall review of positives and negatives, supported obviously by facts or examples. This involves in-depth examination and balanced opinion. An example for this type of a question is critically examine Darwin's theory in understanding evolution. And number seven, critically comment. Now this involves forming a judgment after weighing the pros and cons. This might include analyzing statements from anthropologists or policies. Take for instance, critically comment on NGO's role in the development process in tribal heartlands is a question in this particular context. Number eight, justify. This is rarely asked and it requires providing arguments to support a position or opinion. For instance, justify Pitram Sorokin's statement on egalitarian society demands using knowledge on social stratification to support the scholar's view. Pitrim Sorokin has stated that an egalitarian society with the true equality of men is a myth that has never been realized in the history of mankind. This question is expecting you to justify this statement of Sorokin on the universality of social stratification. Number nine, exemplify. This means providing a typical example of a specific category. And number 10, compare and contrast. This question directly involves highlighting similarities and differences. An example is compare and contrast the economic typology of the tribes given by different anthropologists. Now, understanding these specific directives is crucial for structuring answers effectively and addressing the question's core requirement. That's step number two. And step number three, deciding on the structure and main points of your answer. Now, this step involves swiftly determining the structure of your answer and then the main points you wish to cover. This planning phase should ideally take between 30 seconds to a minute and you can use rough space for this if necessary. By doing this, you can better estimate the time required to adequately answer the question. The effectiveness, organization and clarity of your answer are crucial for scoring higher marks. Therefore, it is important to structure your answer in a way that is easy to understand. For example, if you are discussing the pros and cons of a topic, it's advisable to group all the advantages together 
followed by the disadvantages. Creating a quick outline helps in assembling your thoughts coherently without wasting time during the actual writing process. Even though not a strict rule, a good guideline is to aim for at least 5 to 6 major points for short notes and around 10 to 12 for more extended responses or answers. This helps ensure that your answer is comprehensive and covers all the necessary aspects of the question in a holistic way. For longer answers, the fourth step is to design your introduction. However, this step can be skipped for short answers due to word limit constraints where it's more effective to directly address the main points. In the introduction of a longer answer, you should begin by offering a concise overview of the primary theme or the topic. This could be in the form of a definition or a brief explanation. You can outline the specific aspects of the issue that you will delve into in the main body of your answer. This approach helps set a clear context for your answer and guides the reader on what to expect in the subsequent sections. Step 5. Utilizing visual aids in your answer. Now, this step involves incorporating visual aids like charts, flowcharts, timelines, tables, etc. To organize and clarify your main content. Visual representations can be particularly effective in making complex information more accessible and understandable at a glance. Visual aids are especially beneficial when the question involves types or classifications of a phenomenon. For instance, in questions about various forms of descent rules or marriage rules, Drawing a chart can be immensely helpful. In the case of a compare and a contrast question, creating a table is advisable if there are clear distinctions between the elements that are being compared. This approach allows for straightforward comparison. However, a word of caution, if the differences are not distinct or discrete, it's better to explain these in sentences rather than forcing a tabular comparison, which might lead to confusion or even oversimplification. Step 6. Writing the main content. The sixth step involves crafting the main body of your answer while being mindful of the time. Here are some key points to consider. Cover multiple perspectives. Try to address various aspects such as social, political, economic, religious angles. Use diverse examples to substantiate your points wherever applicable and necessary. Assume nothing. Write your answers as if the reader knows nothing about the topic. Remember, it's your knowledge and understanding that are being evaluated here. Accuracy is the key. Avoid speculation and invention of information. Be specific and accurate with details that you provide. Use concrete examples and real facts and be particularly careful with percentages, years and other statistical data. Credibility of sources. Ensure that your arguments and the evidence supporting them are verifiable. Avoid using uncheckable sources or making claims about statements that were never made. The evaluation in this exam is meticulous and you cannot afford to be callous. Avoid factual errors. It's crucial to avoid factual inaccuracies. If you are unsure about a piece of information, it's better not to include it in your answer at all. And remember, it's better to be vaguely correct than precisely wrong. When in doubt, 
it's preferable to be generally correct in your response rather than providing a specific yet incorrect detail. This approach ensures that your answer is well-rounded, credible and reflects a thorough understanding of the topic. Step 7. Incorporating Examples and Case Studies While writing the main content, always remember to include relevant examples or cite case studies. These real-world references enhance the credibility and the depth of your answer, illustrating how theoretical concepts apply in practical scenarios. Step 8. Writing a Conclusion or Summary The conclusion of your answer should logically follow from both introduction and the main body. However, for short notes, due to word limits, a conclusion may not be necessary. Conclude your answer only when it adds value and is relevant to the question. Please avoid forced or habitual conclusions. Step number 9. Reviewing your answer. If time permits, quickly review your answer to check for any apparent errors, grammatical mistakes or deviations from the question's focus. This step ensures that your response aligns with what was asked and is free from any obvious errors. Step 10. Highlighting the keywords. During your final check, underline any keywords or phrases in your answer. This helps the examiner to process your response more effectively and ensures that your answer's main points stand out. It also gives you the confidence to move on to the next question, knowing you have given your best to the current one. You might as well incorporate this step while writing the answer itself to save precious time. The keywords that you may underline include the names of the scientists or anthropologists you must have quoted, definitions, names of any ethnographies and also the names of the tribal communities or cultures, especially in paper 2. Following these steps can help structure your answers effectively, ensuring they are comprehensive, relevant and clear. And before I close, let me give you three mantras for good answer writing. Practice, practice and practice. Regular practice in answer writing is crucial for several reasons. The act of writing engages a part of the brain known as the reticular activating system, RAS, located at the brain's base. This area acts as a filter for processing information prioritizing what you are currently focusing on. When you write by hand, it brings this task to the forefront, enhancing your brain's focus and comprehension. Additionally, research indicates that the physical act of writing involving the hand in forming letters and connecting them engages the brain more actively than typing. Typing involves pressing similar looking keys which does not stimulate the brain in the same way. Moreover, since your examination is a written one, practicing writing by hand improves your speed, legibility and the overall understanding of the physical and the cognitive effort involved. Starting with open book practice can be beneficial. Compile all relevant topics from various sources and present them as an answer. This approach allows you to view the concept more elaborately and comprehensively, enhancing your conceptual understanding. It also helps you develop the discretion needed to calibrate your content according to the question, whether it's a short note for 10 marks or a longer answer worth 15 or 20 marks. Remember, consistent practice, a deep understanding of the subject and quality resources 
are the key to excelling in your examination. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the content. Liking and subscribing helps us reach more learners like you. Share your thoughts and feedback in the comments below. You can also reach out to me directly via my email which is provided in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.